So I buy more sneakers and clothing than the average person. That's obvious. This is a channel about shoes and clothing. I do more with that stuff than the normal person does. I create content around the shoes and the clothing that I buy. So in that whole process, I'm gonna buy some things that I regret and these regrets are gonna help you during your personal buying process because you may see something, whether it's in the description of the item or a picture and be like, oh no, that's actually not gonna work for me if you remember some of the things that I'm gonna point out in this video. So I've got five things here. Most of them are summer items. I've got one winter item that I'm gonna throw in here just as a reminder. Before I dive into everything, I have a quick feature and that is from Clean Shoe Protector. So shout out to them. They sent me some of their crease protectors that I'll include for you guys down in the description. I threw them in a pair of Air Max 90s that I've got right here. And as you can see on this left shoe, you can see where, you know, this is one of my most worn pairs of shoes. And even though this shoe is not really leather, you can definitely see creases on the top of the shoe. This right shoe has the protector in it. So really it prevents this look from happening, which you see a lot in Air Force Ones, Jordan 4s, Jordan 3s, any shoe that you think is gonna crease, you can toss these crease protectors in there and it stays in there pretty good. So shout out to them. You can check down in the description if you wanna get some crease protectors and you know keep your shoes looking clean. Creasing really is a personal preference. It doesn't bother me on certain shoes. I did not think that these Air Max 90s were gonna crease up like they did, but they do. And honestly, they look better with the protectors in there. Air Force Ones, Jordan Ones, it may be your personal preference whether you like the creasing or not. Feel free to hit the comment section. Let me know if you guys care about creasing. But if you wanna prevent that, check out Clean Shoe Protector. Let's keep it going. Okay, starting off with this Chicago Bulls vintage shirt. It's actually not a real vintage t-shirt. It gives off that look pretty well, but it's not. It's from 47 brand, and this is their vintage tubular design. Now, there's a few issues I have with this shirt. For one, you can't fake the funk. If you want a real vintage throwback style shirt, you gotta thrift it. You gotta go to a store that has vintage items. There's a few reasons why I was let down with this shirt. For one, it doesn't necessarily feel like a true vintage shirt. You know, most of those worn black t-shirts, the look is so cool, I really like it, but they're hard to find, especially a Chicago Bulls one. And when you do find those, they're super soft because over time they soften up. This is not. This is like a pigment dye or some kind of wash they've done to this shirt to make it look aged and faded. And it doesn't necessarily feel super comfortable. I do, however, really like the design on the front. The only thing I have beef with is the small 47 logo down there at the bottom. Now. Does it ruin the shirt? Absolutely not. But if it's a true vintage t-shirt, it's not gonna have a new brand like 47 right on the front there. So that kind of gives it away. However, my biggest issue is with the fit of the shirt. Now, I hate it when brands do this. They recommend that you size up because of the vintage process. Now, don't just say size up and not provide any more details. You really need a size chart for a shirt like this. If you're gonna recommend someone sizes up, I wanna know why. Is it gonna be tight around my chest? Is it gonna be the length? Is it gonna be the arms? Put a size chart. I can pull it off, don't get me wrong. I would return this if I couldn't, but it's just a little bit too short for my liking. They tried to recreate that retro fit, so it's short and it's boxy. When you size up on a shirt like that, which they recommend doing, it just gets wider. It doesn't necessarily get longer. So the fit is all off with this t-shirt. However, I still like 47 brand. I like all of the brands that I'm gonna feature in this video. I'm talking about these specific items. All right, next up, we have a pair of Jordan Michigan basketball shorts. And I really wanted to like these. I wanted them to be perfect. However, they're not. I made an entire video about the inseam of shorts and the length, why it's important, etc. The length of these shorts totally ruins it for me. I get that it's probably a throwback to the Fab Five, but still, I really can't get down with these shorts. They are so long. The inseam on here is like 11 inches or something like that. I wouldn't say I'm not gonna wear these because I probably will, whether it's on the court if I ever get a chance to play again, or 
if it's just lounging around. I'll certainly wear them. They look cool. I really like the way they look. They've got the Michigan logo around the waist. Obviously that Jordan logo stitched in there. I thought about returning these. I bought them off Fanatics, that website, and what a pain in the ass it is to return. I hate when brands make it hard to return items. If it's gonna be a struggle for me to return something, forget it. You're just not gonna get my business going forward. If I bought these from a small store or a boutique, that's fine. You know, I really buy from those places knowing I don't plan on returning because that's a pain for them. The business is important to them and it's gonna hurt a little bit more if you return something. Okay, this is super random, but I have to throw it in here because this thing irks me and I just saw it in my closet and was like, oh man, I really should have returned this one, but I didn't. I bought this sweater from Zara and obviously it's the middle of summer no one's really buying sweaters right now, but in a couple of months you will. So let this just be a reminder. Wool bothers me. Don't buy a wool sweater from a brand like Zara or Uniqlo or any fast fashion brand unless it's like 100% merino wool or something that's not gonna itch you. They will use cheap wool and polyester or something that's gonna make you itch. For me, if that doesn't bother you, this is irrelevant. If you get itchy easily like I do, avoid stuff like this. The problem is with wool sweaters, they're not all created equally. You could easily buy a wool sweater from I don't know, J. Crew or something like that, and it may not be labeled as merino wool, but it won't make you itch. Other times, you buy something like this and like you put it on and it feels like there's just cats clawing at you, and I don't want anything to do with that. I'm not even a cat guy as it is, so just the thought of that, ugh. Ugh. If I really wanted to wear this, I could wear a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it. So it'd have to be a cold day, just a little barrier in between my skin, my gentle skin, and this itchy, scratchy, lion claw sweater. So that's one thing. The next is the design. If you're tall, vertical stripes, they might not be for you. This one, I threw it on and I was like, damn, I do not look like the Zara model that I saw wearing this. So keep that in mind, vertical stripes and wool when you're buying sweaters. All right, now, I bought some tie-dye shorts from PacSun. Never have I ever seen a pair of shorts that fit as small and tight as these do. I'm convinced they're women's shorts and they mixed them up on the website or something like that. Tie-dye is in right now. I love tie-dye. This is, this is maybe a little bit more out there than I would typically go, but if you're wearing a pair of shorter shorts, which I expected these to be, and you know a basic tee, you're not showing that much tie-dye. You got it on your thigh, and that's about it. The fit is the main issue here. They fit like a pair of Hanes boxers, tight around the thigh and so short. The, that's the odd part, the inseam, is probably like a five or six inch inseam, which I can get down with, but the fact that they are so tight everywhere, they don't work. I will occasionally go up in PacSun clothing because I know it runs tight. I didn't on these, big regret, big regret. Like these are unwearable. So the take home here is if you're buying something from PacSun or an Urban Outfitters that has their own line, chances are it is gonna be the most trendy fit you can imagine. And slim, tight shorts right now are in. So if you're buying something from one of those websites, just know maybe you should size up and size up for real to get a truer fit. Also, keep in mind, if you have an experience like this, definitely try to return it if you can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I buy a lot of sneakers, I buy a lot of clothing. I have a lot of people I give this stuff to, whether I donate it, sell it, give it to a friend or family member, it goes to a good home if I don't end up wearing it or making content with it. So just keep that in mind. I'm not just stuffing this stuff back in my closet and just letting it sit there. Okay, and then last up, we got a t-shirt from one of my favorite brands. This is Stussy, and my biggest regret with this t-shirt is the color. Yellow, in general, is a really hard color to buy online because you don't know the true pigment. You don't know how it's gonna look in person. On camera right now, 
This may look totally normal, but in person, it's like this greenish, boogery yellow. It's really off-putting. I do not like the color of this t-shirt at all. And typically, Stussy t-shirts love the color of them. Most of them are pigment dyed. This one right here, one of my favorites. It's this dark charcoal color. I got one that's purple. It's like a lavender tone. Absolutely love it. This guy right here, no, no. You know what's weird? I bought this from Urban Outfitters and Urban Outfitters selection of Stussy t-shirts is a little bit different than everyone else's. It's always something really simple on their website or an item that is just like not as cool as the other stuff that they offer. If you're into Stussy, you know what I mean. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Maybe they're putting lesser quality stuff in Urban Outfitters. That may be a reach, but I wouldn't be surprised it being such a big store for them doing that. I got this on sale for, I don't know, they were having one of their huge sales. It was probably like 12 or 14 bucks. And for a Stussy t-shirt, that's a hell of a deal. So when I saw this, I was really hyped. And then when I opened the package, I was like, oh, how did they mess this up? It's just such an ugly color yellow. And the fit is a little weird too. It's huge. Do you guys see that? Do you notice how big this t-shirt is? Let me know down in the comment section if you've had any issues like I pointed out in this video or let me know an item that you bought that you regret. Make sure you leave a like on this one for me and if it's your first time watching one of my videos, subscribe. If you wanna see how I style stuff that actually fits me, follow me on Instagram or go check out some of my lookbooks and I have a bunch of content on the way, stuff that I bought that I actually really like. So that'll be the next video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.